So today I'd like to talk a little bit about batteries and for the purpose of this conversation I'm going to be addressing only batteries specifically that will be used to power an off-grid system. And for the off-grid setup there will be three types of batteries being discussed here. Now we are all familiar with probably the most used of these three and that is the lead acid battery. Now lead acid batteries come in several different varieties and even in those variety types there will be notable differences that we'll be discussing as well. So for an overall simplification there are basically two main types of lead acid batteries. <clears throat> the standard starting battery in the deep cycle. And most people understand the basic differences between the two of these. And for off-grid usage, we will only be discussing the latter. So there seems to be an infinite number of variations within the deep cycle ratings. For example, deep cycle batteries can come in a multitude of sizes and voltages, from the most popular of the bunch, the 12 volt deep cycle, to the not so often heard of two volt single cell varieties. Lead acid batteries can also be either flooded, acid type, gelled acid, or the AGM or the absorbed glass mat variety each have their own specific usage in a given application. The most commonly used of these three main types, at least when it comes to off-grid application, is the flooded acid. The gelled acid and, acid and the AGMs are used as well and preferred by some, but in my personal opinion, the flooded acid type is the most cost-effective out of the three. And as we'll see, it is also my opinion, the best type, or the best of the three types. It's the best. Love it. And when I say best, I'm not talking about specific engineering or design features necessarily more than I'm talking about the specific design application of the three. Each of the three types mentioned have specific design purposes that they were engineered for. For example, the AGM or absorbed glass mat was specifically designed for military applications where in battle, if the battery was to take a hit from enemy fire, it would not drain out and in fact continue to function at capacity to see the troops to safety. But the AGM is typically more expensive and would not give duty cycle ratings that would be as desirable in an off-grid situation, which now that we brought up duty cycle ratings, let's talk about that for a minute. Because what often happens is when someone is new to the off-grid scenario, the tendency is uh, when battery shopping is to search for a battery with the most amp hour ratings. And we're going to talk about that in a minute as well. <clears throat> and while amp hour rating is something that we need to factor into the mix here as well. The duty cycle ratings are probably the most important consideration when it comes to batteries for off-grid applications. The duty rating is the amount of projected cycles the battery will give you over a lifetime of usage. For example, every time you run the batteries down to the rated low point of the battery's reserve, this is considered a cycle, and every battery design will have an engineered amount of cycles in them. So let's say you're shopping for batteries and you see the 12-volt boat battery with 300 amp hours of capacity. It may only have a limited number of cycles in it compared to the, let's say, a 6-volt Trojan deep cycle that, while the amp hour ratings may be the same, the Trojan will have an infinitely greater duty cycles. The boat battery will weigh in the neighborhood of maybe 50 pounds and the Trojan 150 pounds. The difference is in the construction of the battery. Which one is better? Well, each of them is better for what they're meant for. The boat battery outdoes the Trojan when it comes to power packed into a lightweight package and the Trojan outdoes the boat battery in duty cycles. As in most things in life there are give and take. Weight is a consideration on a boat whereas it is not so much in an off-grid scenario. So the both types of batteries have their purpose. The one will work for the other and vice versa but it is not ideal. So for most off-grid applications the flooded acid battery is the best suited for its purpose. And as I mentioned before there are different voltage ratings. So which is better? And again, we have different applications to some degrees here as well. But for most purposes, the standard six volt cell is just fine. But there are some advantages to the two volt single cell batteries that must be mentioned here. And to be honest, this advantage is better for those with a really big battery system. The bigger the system that you're planning on, the more important the consideration of the two volt single cell becomes. And here's why. Let's say you have purchased a really large battery bank. After a few years, one of the cells in your battery array goes bad, shorts out or whatever. It would be much more efficient to replace a single cell as opposed to replacing, let's say, a six or 12 volt battery with most likely only one bad cell in it. Because if you don't know, a six volt battery actually has three cells built in together. Now let's talk a little bit about the subject of amp hours for a minute. Amp hours can be a tricky subject for some because a 12 volt battery that has 20 amp hours has the same capacity as a 6 volt battery with 40 amp hours and a 2 volt cell with let's say 120 amp hours. So logically the 2 volt here is the best, right? 
Well, not so fast because in order to get watts, and remember watts is the total work that is or can be done. It's the results of amps times volts. The watt hour rating in some ways is easier to figure, but it's not that hard to figure it using amps and volts. And you would need amps and volts to get to watts. So 20 amp hours times 12 volts equals 240 watt hours. That would be the equivalent of one 100 watt bulb for 2.4 hours. And the math is the same for all three scenarios. So in order to come up with a system that is right for you, you must count the amount of watt hours you will be using at night or during times of low light and wind in order to arrive at the capacity you will need to sustain your electrical needs. That's a simplified description of it anyways. Maybe we can make another video explaining in more detail just how to do all of that. But for now, you get the idea. So now that we know a little bit about the lead acid type battery, what about the lithium ion type cells? So lithium batteries have truly revolutionized the industry. There is no doubt about that. Because of lithium cells, electric cars have become a viable thing for the average consumer and aviation has started to use them as well as a power source to propel aircraft. Because of their lightweight and power density, they have become the choice for such applications. But what about the off-grid usage? Are they any good for use in, let's say, off-grid? Many people have been using them and in fact companies like Tesla have been selling solar powered backup systems that have wall mounted lithium battery packs. Solar companies have been capitalizing on this trend as well offering 24 and 48 volt single battery systems with incredible amp hour and big duty ratings in small lightweight packages. So why not go out and purchase one? Well I'm not going to discourage anyone just yet but there are just a few considerations to take into account before running and purchasing one of these handy little packages. Right off the bat, cost would be the biggest thing for me. Uh, the fact that all else being equal, the cost of the lithium battery is about twice that of a standard deep cycle lead acid battery per amp hour duty rating. And while they have been out there for some time in all kinds of forms, i.e. cell phones, tool batteries, electric cars, etc., the average three year or 500 duty cycle ratings that is typical in these devices just don't jive with some of the off-grid lithium battery sales pitches and they just haven't been out there long enough in my opinion to be tested to their fullest sure they claim 3,000 duty cycles but what are we seeing in our cell phones and portable cordless tools so for now at least for me I'm gonna stick with lead acid now here we go folks the nickel iron battery some have called this battery the king of all batteries. But with a price range of approximately four times that of lead acid batteries and about twice as much as a good lithium ion battery, the nickel iron is not cheap. With an almost unlimited charge discharge cycle duty and lifespans of up to 100 years, it is easy to see why one could love this battery. Invented by Thomas Edison, it is sometimes referred to as the Edison battery. The nickel iron battery uses an alkali electrolyte unlike the acid electrolyte of the lead acid battery and harsh charge and discharge cycles don't hurt this battery one bit under the worst of circumstances this battery will last over 30 years charge capacitance can be restored simply by swapping out the electrolyte effectively bringing the battery back to original the only real maintenance will be adding water every few months to replenish the level due to off gassing because of the electrolyte exchange during the recharge cycles much the same as a lead acid battery. So there you have it folks, and by all means, this is by no means comprehensive, but rather just a quick look at some of the different types of batteries and their applications and viability in off-grid. Thanks everyone for your support. It is much appreciated, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.